My name is Phil Isara from Samoa in the Pacific region. Um, I have been uh, selected um, to be representing indigenous peoples in the, uh, as an observer to the Climate Investment Fund, more particularly on the pilot program for climate resilience, PPCR. And uh, <coughs> whilst observing in, in that context, I have also been uh, asked to to also represent uh, my constituency at, uh, at the joint committee level in uh, their subcommittee. The, I, I like this program a lot because it's, it deals specifically from a point of view of where I come from. I come from small island development states and uh, we are arguably one of the, the, the peoples that are heavily at, uh, at the direct forefront of the impacts of climate change. And at least we hope that I represent the voices of my constituency at the subcommittee level and the discussions at the very highest governance level, which is one of the uh, very positive and powerful element of uh, governance in the Climate Investment Fund, uh, that we are able to sit down with the uh, subcommittee members and basically participate in the, the discussions of the decisions, although we are not part of the decision making, but we are given uh, an equal opportunity with the members of the subcommittees to actually uh, discuss openly issues that are very relevant at the ground level, at the program level and the project level. So I value that. Uh, and despite the fact that everybody knows uh, wherever I go to these meetings, it takes me at least uh, one or two days just traveling, even though the challenges are huge. But I still take it as a responsibility uh, that is invaluable, so that at least uh, the voices of my constituency are actually shared and, and heard by the decision makers and in the Climate Investment Fund. So, and in terms of my own country where I come from, uh, we have a PPCR program and it's being uh, implemented uh, very well in my view so far, uh, although there uh, have been some uh, delays in the procurement and the start of phase, which is basically the, the, the characteristics of these large programs. It's a 30 million US dollars program grant from the PPCR, which is great. But the fact that it's addressing issues of resilience on, on our coastal communities and a lot of the districts is something that I value a lot. There are challenges, but of course the benefits over basically uh, outnumber the, 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 these challenges. And any opportunity that we get to receive assistances to help our people uh, adapt and uh, also engage in mitigation activities for the long term on how we, we, we actually adapt to the impact of climate change. We, we basically value that. I'm here because of the, uh, the stakeholder advisory network meetings. I was invited to participate in that. And um, my view in terms of the SAN, S-A-N, the stakeholder advisory network, it's, it is a, a very, um, positive way. I, I said in my opening introduction that it's long overdue. If it's done properly, I mean, it's now the first attempt by CIF and I commend CIF for the Climate Investment Fund for that initiative that all the observers, be it the Climate Investment Fund, the Adaptation Fund, with the Global Environment Facility, uh, other funds, climate funds, the observers are being able to be brought together so that they can have uh, a common sharing of the common in the goals and, and the reasons for why we, we exist uh, in terms of, uh, of, the, of this sand. So the concept is great, but the challenges are there to ensure that there is ownership and a real ownership by, and a buy-in from other, other climate funds. Uh, the way it is at, at the moment, um, whilst it was an initiative of the Climate Investment Fund, the onus is on the new coordinating committee to ensure that they do reach out and ensure that there is inclusiveness in terms of the coordinating committee. 
and the fundamental issue of being an advisory network needs to be very, a very positive and very powerful focus for the future of SAND because the advisory needs to help observers on the issues that they will then represent the constituencies to defend their issues in the governance level, the highest governance levels of these climate funds, but also be able to advise on the problems at the program and, and, project, and the project level. And we hope that the coordinator who's going to be appointed to support uh, the climate, uh, the coordinating committee, will be able to facilitate uh, avenues of assistance and help to advise not only observers but also the people that have problems at the country level, be it uh, uh, making uh, multilateral development banks or implementing agencies to account for non-compliance with their own policies at the country level. We hope that there is some avenue of pointing our people at the ground level, the real beneficiaries of these programs, mm -hmm. to actually avenues to make sure that there is adequate accountability uh, for the implementing agencies and not only that but our governments as well. So that's that's where I come from and uh, I certainly value being here despite the long travels, long hauls in sitting in aeroplanes on average of more than 10 hours each sector so, but I still um, take that in in terms of the, the role that I play and I play it uh, very seriously and this is why I contribute quite actively whenever I go to any of these meetings I try to voice, you know, to be the voice of our, our constituencies, not only from the Pacific but more particularly also on the indigenous people's issues that I represent.